Oh well, yeah, it's working here. Are we live? Let's go. Let me let me look. Mm, I can't tell. It says it's white and boring. Oh. What became of Love Me Tender? Well, that's a good question. We're gonna figure it out. Oh, that's on the other one. No, that's on the live. Oh, we're live. Good. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Sorry. Hard to make transitions. I'm an old guy, right? So technology's a little new, so I turned that off. Hang on a second, guys. I'll get with you here. Let other people come over and join us from our premiere. That was such a good, that was such a good day. I tell you what, I just loved it. Okay, so we're in live mode now. Wow, there's a bunch of you out there. Uh, somebody asked what happened to Love Me Tender. Love Me Tender is our big tender that we built. Uh, and it goes on the back of the boat, but the dang thing weighs uh, 12, a lot. A lot. Yeah, say, say good morning to Betsy over there. Hi. Hi. Uh, so the plan is to, I'm going to, you know what? I thought maybe we'll just get it, rid of it and replace it, but I haven't actually seen what it does to the back of the boat for trim. So I'm going to bring it down here. Betsy doesn't even know this yet. No, God, no. Yes. She doesn't like Not that. Not Fat Elvis. Fat Elvis is coming down here. <laughs> Love me, Tinder, get it? Uh, so Fat Elvis is gonna come down here. I may need to put her on another trailer because that trailer that she's on was not designed to make the trip down the highway. Or maybe I'll just come back roads with a with Maybe a you could just forget it. No, I don't want to forget it. I would it. really rather just I raise don't... money for a nice little, what is it I want? Boston Whaler. A nice little Boston Whaler. Well, yeah. I, mean, I would feel so much better with you out there with a nice little Boston Whaler. But you can sink a Boston Whaler. That thing, you, the tender, you can't sink. And then I also got to raise the money well, I mean, you to can, get one but... of those like little barrel inflatable poof. Oh, a life raft. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, but we still have a couple of, we have You a won't few go more. out to sea on this without a life raft? No. Oh. <sighs> You know, where's your confidence? Where's your faith? Where's your trust? It's it's not about you. <laughs> when I was on Charlie's boat, it's not boat. about the ocean. No, I know. It's I about know. Mother Nature I, and the fact that she's unpredictable. Yeah, when that chain plate pulled out of Charlie's boat, I was laying there going back to sleep, thinking, okay, how did you, how do you how do you release the life boat? I can't remember because <laughs> I put the one I put the uh, strap onto it, and he told me all right that and that, and I was like, okay, I should have paid more attention to that. Nah, it was good. But yeah, we'll get a life. We'll get a life. What do they call it? Life raft. Anyway, so the tender is really heavy, but I want to throw it onto the back. You know what? We could run it across some scales bringing it down here because I don't even know what it weighs. I'm guessing it's about 1,200, 1,300 We could pounds. just leave it where it is. No, Dave doesn't need another boat in his well, front somebody yard. Somebody would love to have her. Well, we could raffle her off. If she pulls the ass in down too far, then we'll raffle off. The only love thing that I like about that tender is Fat Elvis on the back of the transom. Me, and other tender. than Fat Elvis, no. I really am not okay. a fan. Well, we can date. Although, okay, I like the horns. The we horns? We need the horns. The cow horns on the, the front. The horns need to move here. Are you watching questions? Oh, maybe some good questions there. Okay. <sighs> life vests and lifeboats are for losers. <laughs> well, Harvey, you just go with that, okay? Yeah, you, know, you don't have to put a life vest on if you come on this boat. I have them, but it's your choice. Well, I think it depends on where you are, what the conditions are, and what's happening, and and whatever. You know where most people die on boats? At it's, the dock. Well, well, you know, the problem is sometimes a life jacket is not a good thing. I mean, oh, yeah. my aunt and uncle were on this sailboat. Oh, tell that story. On, Hold on, on this Grand is a good story. Lake in Colorado, and this was years ago, and they were on a, a Catalina, I don't know if it was, I think it had to have been a little larger than a Catalina 22, but... You know, it's a nice little day sailor, and you go out and put her around. Anyway, they were on there. There were like six of them, and the ladies, some of them were down below, you know, probably putting their hairspray on, and the guys were up above. And this wind, rogue wind, came across the mountain and just flipped the boat. Well, the deal with a lot of these day sailors is their keel is not a fixed keel, and because it's made to be trailered. So when you put it in the water, you got to crank the keel down. A lifting keel. And then you need to lock the sucker. Well, guess what? They didn't lock that in. And when that boat went, that keel sucked right back in and it stayed upside down. Right. And that was the and nice little Catalina. There's nothing wrong with a Catalina. But the problem, this was totally user operator error. Anyway, the people above got thrown out. 
but the ones down below, oh my God. Yeah. And there were, and my aunt, who really wasn't one to get in the water and put her around, I mean, her hair was really more important than anything. She had had enough of an upbringing from my grandfather, who of course threw me in the water at four and said, don't sink, um, that she ripped off her life jacket and she swam out and came above. The others were down there in life jackets. Yeah. And of course, you cannot dive underwater and swim out you know, like when you're in that situation. So sometimes it may not be your friend. I mean, you have to just look at every situation. But if you're on deck and it's for any reason whatsoever that looks, the wind's blowing, the waves are rough, the water's, I mean, come on, it's not really bad out on the river. Although there is the possibility of tornadoes, right? But there's a tornado. I'm not even gonna be on the boat. I don't think a life jacket's gonna help me at that point. Yeah. Right? Right. So yeah. it just depends. On the river, right now, on the Arkansas River. Yeah. Well, the worst thing There's is... There's not much of a current, even. It's, no, maybe half a knot. It's even on the Arkansas, but it's it's the cold that'll get you. So Okay, I have to go back and read these. Yeah, you go back and read these. Thanks, Brandon, and thanks... Who else? You I guys that are don donating money, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen to your money. It's going to buy diesel, okay? Because I have barely anything in my tanks. I got the tank with the water sorted out, and yes, it's rainwater. I just haven't figured out where it's coming in yet. So I'm sucking rainwater out of my diesel tank. When you know, the only tank that had rainwater in it, we put diesel into that tank. Oh, oh, I like this. This guy says, it's not about the boat, it's about the other idiots. Yep, that's that's the deal. You got to always look out for the other idiots. Well, yeah. It's like it is here in bad weather. It's snow and ice. Yeah. People say, well, are you scared to go out and drive in it? No. no. I have four-wheel drive in every vehicle I own. Well, I have no problem getting around. But you get out there, and here's a bunch of old guys in their minivans. Oh, yeah. And I'm not going to get out there with them. No, they suck. Well, some of the rednecks in their big truck, my truck can go fast and come in snow. Yeah, but it won't stop very fast. Or It's the ice, really. We don't get snow. We get ice. We've had some snow. We've had a little pretty snow this time. Yeah. If it's that wet stuff, they get stuck on these little hills going to the mall. Yeah. His wife says, oh, honey, go pick this up. We need some me. bread and milk. Oh, we got to have more bread. More we, milk. We, Our we, weather forecasts this, now are how many loaves of bread <laughs> you're going to need. <laughs> we suck at snow in Oklahoma because we just don't get enough of it. Um, oh, thanks, guys. Rod, Corey, appreciate it. Wow, there's 10 gallons of diesel right there. Every every $5 is another gallon of diesel, okay? That's a, that gets us uh, two and a half hours of run time. We'll get that transmission fixed. I think it'll be better. All right, now, let me talk about the transmission. Uh, I talked to, well, I have some connections, you know, Charlie, to Brian, to Joe, to Kevin. I can't remember. But that's, uh, those are engineers. Uh, the last guys are engineers with Allison, right? Old retired guys. So they know uh, the AT545 transmission, which is fantastic because no one else does. The rest of us were guessing at it. So all the transmission guys I've been talking to for years, it's like, well, you know, it'll lock up. You know, no, that transmission does not lock up. It never will lock up. There's no clutch inside the uh, the torque converter to lock up. Uh, so there's no electronics, there's none of that stuff, which actually works out fine for us because the dirt track racers actually remove the, uh, some of them remove the uh, torque converter altogether because the tires slip on the dirt and they don't need it. You know, they want they want more power through to the, to the rear wheels. And that's what I need. So we're, uh, I'm pulling it off now and I did a really bonehead thing the other day. We shifted it thinking, oh, I can get it. We can get back to where that brace and then up and over it. And we've never taken the transmission out without the engine. But now it's like, okay, let's try taking the transmission out and leave the engine where it is. So we got the transmission back. Steve and I did and up against the brace. And it's like, oh, it's going to bump into this brace. So I was like, oh, no problem. I'll just take the, the cutoff saw. We'll cut off the brace and bolt it back on when we put it back on. No big deal, right? And I cut right through the oil pan of the transmission. So now, instead of just getting it back far enough that I can get the torque converter off, I'm going to pull the whole transmission out. It's a good exercise anyway. My floor down there is built so that I can do that. So I just got to unbolt braces and stuff. Pull the transmission out. Take the pan off. TIG weld the pan back up. And then we'll have good access to the torque converter. But we're going to probably just replace the torque converter with a, you know, a little stub shaft that bolts onto the flywheel and goes back into the transmission. So that's the plan now. And if that works out, dang, we're going to have a nice transmission and free of charge. And if we ever need to blow it up for some reason... Uh, they cost like $300, $600 on eBay. So anyway, that's the next video coming out. Uh, what's the other thing? You got any other questions? Yes. 
Um, is this the same fabric yeah. as the sails? Yes, this is the same fabric as the sails. I got I bought bolts of it, you know, because it's like, well, if I ever got a turn sail, I need to have this stuff around. So everything on the boat is made out of this. It's Top Gun is what it is. It's the same thing as Sunbrella. That's the other brand. You see it on the front of storefronts, you know, where they, they have this awning out and then they put lights behind it and it shones through at night. It'd be beautiful to light up our sails at night. Oh, come on, please. Okay, yeah. let's. another question yes. is, is that mast supposed to lean forward like that? Yes, yes, no, no, it's, it's crooked. It's that forward mast is crooked, no. It's a Chinese junk, and Chinese junks don't have, you know, on the normal sail boat, you like a Bermuda rig, you'd see a big, you know, triangle sail, then out front you see these these little ones. They come sometimes unfurl from uh, the stay or the cable that goes down from the top of the mast to the front of the boat. It's a jib, you know, it's a sail out front. Well, Chinese junks don't have that. So what we have instead is we lean that forward mast forward, and that one has a four, uh, nine degree forward rake on it. And that puts the whole sail out forward over the front of the boat. So it takes away from the need to have a jib. Now it doesn't act like a jib, but it get, picks up that, uh, that wind up there. If we ever add a jib, and we probably will at some point, just because we're bored and want to try it out, there'll be a bow sprit that goes way on out over the front of the boat and then a jib on that. Jibs help for sailing to windward, so it'll improve windward performance. But for right now, the experiment is to see what big flat sails do. And I think a lot of people kind of miss the fact that we're, we're an experimental boat. I mean, this is a, all educational learning. And people say, well, why you shouldn't be using a school bus transmission? It's like, well, A, you're not buying me the twin disc, so, you know, and uh, it's free. And if it works, and I think it will, then look at all of the other people that will benefit from, you know, they're, they're, the Allison transmissions are laying around, they're a dime a dozen. So, you know, if you, you gotta be, you gotta have a little bit of a creative mindset and a, and a let's, let's just try it and see type attitude before you understand what it is we're doing. Otherwise, what we're doing, you don't understand. And it's so easy, the dumbest comment I ever get is like, well, you just need to buy. Spending somebody else's money is, is the cheapest comment you can ever put on there. It's like, Figuring out a way for them to save money or do it cheaper or save time or show them another approach to things, that's what we're about here. Um, okay, let me... Another question. Oh, yes. Hey, I wanted to show this off. Yeah. Nice guy named Scott sent uh, us this. Wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. You know, okay, it's a Garmin InReach Explorer Plus. And it's a damn fine piece of equipment. It is. It's beautiful. And the Barbara. thing that I love about this is... I mean, I can I can get this set, and the reason I say I can get this set is he's too busy playing with the bilge rats down in the engine room. But anyway, <laughs> I can I can take this and and get it set up and put it on the boat, and from then on I'm gonna know where he is. Now, why is this a problem? Well, in that last video when they're going down the river, and I'm trying to find him on this river <laughs> so I can take video, right, from a bridge or something. And, and the problem is, is my little phone, bless its little iPhone 13 heart, you know, and I, I said, I'm trying to get to this lock and it would zoom me to the lock, only I'd get there and find out I'm on the wrong side of the river. It was just horrible. So I, I'd have to text and I'd say, where are you? Where are you? How long till you're at this next bridge? How nobody would answer me. Well, now, now, now the, the truth, I don't have a map that shows streets and I really don't have a lot of time either, so... I couldn't see where well, you I know. Were. I figured you were probably busy. So then I text Greg. No, I hear nothing. Greg's still trying to learn how to use his smartphone. You know, when your phone is smarter than you, you got a problem, okay? And that's like, that's the problem. I mean, you know, you give my mother, right. give her one of these, and she was like lost in space. Okay. And, anyway. And, and Greg's defense, you set up that thing, and I'm glad you did, because I did not want to read the manual for that thing. So. You don't like to read the manual for anything. No, any. I don't read the manual for anything. But anyway, the only person that would answer me was James, the documentary guy. Holy smoke. You know, and he said, oh, well, there's a, well, we should be at such and such in about 30 minutes. And I thought, holy crap, I got to get moving. And, well, I was on the wrong side of the river. So then I had to go for the next one. But that's the thing. If, if we tell you where he's going next and you want to follow with these locks that go all the way down to the Mississippi. Yeah. You've, you've got to pay attention, even though you know what lock you're going to, that you end up on the right side of the river where you can actually get to where the offices of the lock are. Because if you try to go to the opposite side of the river... There's nothing. There's nothing. And the roads don't go to the river. 
Yeah, it's so, some, some farmer's field. It's when you're on the boat, like if you want to get off, you you there's not many places you can board and disembark. Right. Ports of call are few and far between, and there are no beach bars I've seen yet. Yeah, this place was actually built, we're at Three Forks Harbor in Muskogee, Oklahoma. It's a beautiful facility and highly underused. Uh, part of it is there's a coal plant, right? Right back over there, you see the stacks? Yeah, see those those stacks. So uh, there's a nice coating of, of ash and coal dust, but if you can avoid, you can ignore that. It's a beautiful facility. It's up on the end of the M car. It's the McKellen Kerr Arkansas River Navigational System. So if you're a looper, you get up on coming down the Mississippi, you get off on the Arkansas, and you go upstream. You can come up 400 miles into Oklahoma Indian Territory to Muskogee, Oklahoma, and Betsy and I are getting ready to go see uh, Fort Gibson today. This is one of the uh, the force that was built to actually stop in fighting among the Indians that were being pushed into Oklahoma. So it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting place, a lot of history here. Um, you know, this is Oklahoma, so it's the land run, the oil, all that stuff was, was here. So it's a fascinating place to come to, but it's a long journey up and there's not, it's not popular. So you will be coming up something that is uh, 15, 18 locks, depends how, how high the water is, I think. Could be 17 locks. But anyway, you come up in the locks. I always worried about the locks. And then we did, you saw it in that video. Uh, we, they're, they're easy. And so I'm, I'm happy with the locks. Of course, we haven't done it on a windy day. And we haven't done it at anything other than zero current. So well, it so could get far, marching. Since you've been on the boat, yeah. you've had 80 degrees and you've had 13 degrees. Yeah. Now, 80 isn't bad. But no. somebody wants to know, how are you staying warm? Oh, a little propane heater. That. That is my warmth right there. Uh, and a sleeping bag and lots of blankets. And it's not too bad. Um, we got bigger propane cylinders to handle that. But I can't tell you they're down below because the, nan the nannies will just absolutely freak out if they understand that you got propane down below. <laughs> but the, uh, uh, let's see, how else are we staying warm? Well, it's not that bad. Today is uh, hopefully winter's done. Hopefully well, last taped, night was the last. taped the door shut. That was my I favorite. did, I did. I put tape because I don't have gaskets on my doors yet. And that worked wonders because it was blowing hard. And then, so I had some blue tape around to see on my doors. They, they have lousy gaskets on them yet. In fact, they have no gaskets on them yet. So they need to be redone for winter. But soon it's like it'll be out of my mind until next year. Uh, depending on where we are next year. Oh, plans. Okay, so plans. Somebody asked about that. The plan is I stay it here for a month, three months. I don't know. It's a sailboat and it's my life and I'll do it the way I want. So you can suggest what you like, but forget it. Uh, I do it my way. The, um, the plan is to uh, pull the transmission out, get the torque converter in it. Thank you for the donation. The, um, then we'll do some, uh, some prop tests, make sure that we haven't done something wrong, but I think it's going to be great. We should get you know, more speed, less torque. And then we got to play with the pitch blade. So we got to do all that. The sails have to go up. I got some folks coming out that are local that are coming out to help me tomorrow with it. That's off guys. If you're watching, because we're going to, I'm going to be working on that tra the transmission instead. Uh, but then when the, uh, when the weather's nice, like it's a gorgeous day today, we'll work on putting the sails up on the mast. The mast heads have to go up. I got to go up the mast several times to do all that rigging. I'll be safe, Charlie. Thank you. The, um, do you have someone here? Well, I will when I go up a mask because you, if you get stuck, you got to, I mean, I could have a cell phone with me. And, uh, Betsy, uh, could you come yeah, down? Yeah, you'd be sitting up there for 45 minutes. It's a comfortable seat. Okay. Yeah, that's a comfortable seat. So the mask has to be done. And then uh, what else we got to do? We got to, then we're going to go down to Kerr Reservoir, which is just another day trip down the, down the river. Kerr Reservoir is about, you know, I don't know how many miles, 50 miles, something okay, like that. Okay, you need to stand up because I got to oh, show Oh, you got to show the shirt. Wearing. And then uh, we learn to sail on Kerr, and then we uh, go around. Now you guys got to you got to spend money, okay? Because fuel is expensive now. If we had been in the water in August, this request probably wouldn't be necessary. But we're in the water now, and I'm getting ready to go down river. So here. Okay, let me show you the new shirt. How cool oh, is this? This actually looks a lot like the Challenge Coin. Anyway, this is a really nice. Hanes. Hanes. Heavyweight pre-shrunk shirt. Yeah, all business. All of on our the front shirts side. have been this same this same style. Um this yeah. <laughs> business in the front, party on party the back. back. That's because this is on the back and the front is plain. So yeah. therefore, you know, you can like <laughs> yeah. you know, we you don't care. That, we don't care where you're coming from. We just want to know where you're going, right? Right. So anyway, this okay now. 
here we go. Show the show the coin. Show the coin. Show the coin. All right, here. Let me take it out of the bag because that reflects too much light. It comes well, you a... can show this one that's in a well, no, don't show that one. That one's awesome. That one's got a scratched up thing on it. This has been taken care of. That one's been banged around this for a year. This is the commemorative challenge coin. Now, both the coin and the shirt were available at the party we had last August, and then we just kind of held on to them. But um, Focus. It's... You fuck. Little ATV. Maybe you're too AD. close. I am not. I'm just. There we go. And then this side. Okay. And then, and this is all. I've got the store open now over at the seachestfoundation.com forward slash shop. Yeah. You will find the link below. Yeah. Hopefully. If you buy this stuff, you're not buying fuel. You're you're putting your money into Sea Chest Foundation. Sea Chest Foundation is the nonprofit organization that will help researchers on this boat. We're not, that's down the road because we haven't done sea trials. We don't know what we're gonna have to adjust on this boat, but that is our, that is our future. So as the, once we get this boat into the Gulf, we start really selling her. We'll figure out what we need to change and modify. We'll do that if necessary. And then Sea Chest Foundation kicks in. So we're looking at like, there's some talk right now uh, of going back over to Antigua and helping the marine research facility over there. There's fish traps that these guys, uh, the fishermen drop onto the bottom, they catch fish, but a lot of times they lose their line or their buoy, so they leave the fish trap there. It keeps killing fish and doing its job. So we're gonna go collect those possibly and also kill lionfish. So it's an easy thing to do. So we and may, that wait. may be our first deal. Oh, Darwin. Darwin. I mean, okay, well, we still have Billy. Don't forget Billy. Well, Billy's expensive now, right? Yeah, Billy is a limited, because Billy is nearly extinct. Can you believe? Yeah. Who knows? We have we've they stopped breeding, so many Billies. They, they stopped breeding <laughs> Billies in China, so uh, yeah, Billy, Billy's going to stay. we have a few stay. of those left, and, and yeah, they are say. expensive, but, you know, that's... Billy the bilge rat. Now, this this came about because I called people bilge rats. If you, you just watch our videos but don't give us anything, I said, well, you're a bilge rat. You're going along for the drive. Yeah, you're, but the truth is, for free, if right? all you do is watch a video and you are contributing. You are contributing something. So there really is no such so, thing as somebody that, that, that watches that, us that, that watches doesn't video, contribute. Doesn't contribute, yeah. So, and, and we love our bilge rats. We do. We love so our bilge anyway, rats. But they had a... Somebody Billy, got... Wait a minute. Billy I didn't finish this story. I know, I know, I know. Come on, don't somebody got people. Somebody got so offended by it that we just decided, okay, we're going to make that a thing because I don't need people that get offended easily in life. And Billy so and Regina. Cute. And then we have... They had a baby. They had Darwin. And Darwin... <laughs> Darwin is the adventurous one. Yes. Darwin gets into trouble. Darwin, <laughs> Darwin is going to go everywhere. Darwin was was on the trip with Doug, but Darwin never felt very good, so Darwin never showed his little face. Oh, was he in my bag? He was. He was oh, I never green. noticed him. Yeah, he was green yeah, all the way. He was really green. So if you need something around you to remind you that, you know, you, you put a lot of positive energy into something and it gets done, you need a Darwin in your life. And Darwin is actually a keychain. A keychain. So he's great. Or you I can mean, hang from a mirror. You could buy you could buy dozens of them, and and they could be Christmas tree ornaments too. Oh, that'd be. But nice. anyway, they're affordable because I wanted to make sure we had things that were affordable. We also have the beautiful luggage. Yeah. I mean, there's just some neat stuff I'm on there. I'm using that. And it's it's yeah, and That's some why thermal up to the rest mugs. Of you, yeah. Um, it's I had to get all this to a place where I could keep up with it, and so anyway, that's where it is. All right. Sea Chest so Foundation. So you, you buy the merch, you support seachest.org, you throw a donation in here, or if you're a Patreon, patron, patron and Patreon, uh, or you can donate to PayPal and one of those things. We appreciate all that help. That stuff and, uh, the, and the stuff we're watching for YouTube, that, that all helps support the boat right now. So we're doing a little bit of both, okay? Something for now and something in the future, we appreciate it. Even our bilge rats, thank you very much. You guys, we love you too. All right, what else we got? Any questions? I don't know. I gotta look. All right, we haven't been looking. What, so I, what was I talking questions. about? So little time. So down the river at, a, at some pace. Um, Horrible commercials. Are you kidding? Those no, no. Bilge rat commercials are great. I love the bilge rat commercials. So suck it up, Buttercup. Um, How much is the docking fee? Depends on where you are. Okay, here uh, they're charging me twenty five dollars a day, which by yeah, marina standards is a bargain. Look at it. it's ten dollars. Ten dollars a foot. But the problem here is... That's not $10 a foot. Well, if you're 75 feet... That's a said, month. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. it was... 12 years ago, it was $7 a foot here. So you probably are getting a bargain. But considering you're not using their electric, mm. their gas dock doesn't work. 
Yeah. And their Wi-Fi kind of sucks, too. Oh, it totally sucks. Then it's, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's a deal or not. The shower's nice. The shower's lovely, and it's got lots of hot water. <laughs> so I use, because I turned mine off, because I had, I had work on my batteries the other day, so I couldn't use the hot water. But it's a pretty place. It is. They mow the lawn. Yeah, and I thought, you know, who would build a, uh, uh, this facility right next to a power plant and put it north of the power plant? This is Oklahoma. Wind always blows out of the south. I mean, it's, it's like northerns come through and then it blows out of the south for the next week. And the answer to that question is, there, there's a bridge over there. I don't even know what highway that is. But 62. It's the highway 62. You hear the motorcycle? So there's a bridge over there, and this is the pit they created to build that big ramp because it has to go up over the uh, the river, and that they give us you know 56 feet of clearance, even at flood over there. So this all was a pit, and so all they did is they dug that cut out over there that goes right out to the river, and boom. So they were taking advantage of something they already had. So that was I was like oh. So someone asked. If their Wi-Fi smart. sucks, how are you doing this? Well, because I went down to Sprint. I spent a day getting this thing working because I have this gadget. So it's a, it's a 5G uh, Sprint connectivity thing. I get 100 megs, gigs, 100 gigs. And then I also have this one because I burn this one up pretty quick. This is only like 10 gigs. But the problem out. is, if you like to download movies, that only gives you one. That's, that's, that's three, gigs three gigs right there. Yeah. So the big problem is, for crew that come on here, there's no more like, no. just forget this. Bring DVDs. Yeah, and your own data plan. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just, this is. They're pricey. Now, eventually, we're going to go to a system that has uh, multiple SIM cards can go into it. I can't remember what it's called. Petlink. Petlink, yeah, that's it. Hollis used it on his RV. A lot of RVers all know about it. And that we can use that, and we can get, you know, a few miles offshore, probably before that goes away. Even settling around the Caribbean, you know, we could get close to Puerto Rico. As soon as you can see the, the, the island first, and then it's like not too much further, you start picking up some, and your cell phone just goes nuts with all the backlog of messages. Um, so we can work that until we get Starlink or something like that gets up and going. So that'll be cool. That so cool. it does make uploading videos yeah, I don't. Challenging. Yeah, I just, I'll do it from when I have a good link. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I uploaded this last one from here. You did? Yeah. Using yeah. that? Yeah. It's oh. not too bad. It's, how it's not how much data have you used? Do you have any Oh, it's left? gone. No, it's, it's empty. The, the big one has data, but the little one's gone until, the, until like next month. Starts okay. over again. Okay, so what other questions? Thank you again. Appreciate the donations, guys. As I'm seeing this like, cha-ching, it's fuel. Okay. Maybe they'll sell me their old diesel here. Since their pumps aren't working, I bet that tank up there still has diesel in it. Do you have more plans to redistribute the weight? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to put the sales on. You know, that's step A. I'm going to put the tender on, step B, to just see how much that messes me up in the wrong direction. And then I don't have any fuel in those tanks up front. You know, you don't want to trim her out perfectly with all your fuel loaded on. So it's like you know, about half, you know, is what I expect to do. And then maybe we want her up a little bit more on the bow anyway for the way she sails. So it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to jump and make a decision and then think, well, shit, you know, later on that was the wrong decision to make once we know how she sails and, and how she behaves with fuel on board. So, you know, the thing to do is just do it like we've done it uh, already. This boat has been very organic, you know. It's like, well, let's see what the next step, you know, uh, when we get there. And so we're going to wait. We're not going to jump and do things. But there's other things you can do. There's... I learned something about blisters. There's torpedo blisters. They're, they're actually bulges in the ship, ship. They gave it more uh, displacement, but they're really to take the impact of a torpedo because the torpedo would detonate when it hits the at hull, and that's not the real hull. So uh, that was a clever thing, but they still use blisters to correct boats, and we could pull her out of the water, put a blister on the transom to raise the ass in that way. Um, right now, I'm kind of thinking... You know, I'm okay with it, just the way it is. Just, uh, you know, pull it out next time and we'll repaint the, the water line and say, no, that's what it should have been. Um, so it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm really happy with the way she's, uh, she's handled. I love the way that the transmission's uh, operated so far. Uh, I love the steering on her. Oh, man. I was a little worried about that, and that's been fantastic. Somebody said something cute the other day on Facebook. They said, uh, well... And I, he was joking. He says, well, or he wasn't. And then he decided he should, ought to act like he was joking. So anyway, he says, well, 90% of the problems you're having are, are more predicted in comments on your videos. 
And I said, that's just bullshit. That is complete horseshit. 100% of the problems I'm having were predicted in comments on videos. The problem is there's another 2 million things that were predicted that didn't happen. <laughs> so, you know, it all depends in relativity, right? So take life, the good things that come along and, and don't discount them. They'll, they'll, you'll have problems. Failures, you know, if you're not failing at something, you're just not doing it right. So show them, somebody wants to know food storage. How are you handling food storage? Well, I don't... You don't have a lot of food. I, I know snack. That. I don't, look, I got bread. I've got oatmeal. I got something in that box down there. What's this area for? This was going to be a, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Oh, this the is the dishwasher? dishwasher. Yeah, and then I got, see, most of the good stuff is down here. See, Brian built this. I got, I even have flour, sugar, and yeast, and spaghetti. And rigatoni? Well, when have you ever cooked pasta? Well, because I went to that, what's that funky little, um. Aldi? Aldi, I went to Aldi, and that's you, all they have. Did you think, like. They didn't have noodles. Well, you can't snack on it. Well, no, but I, I got I got I got spaghetti sauce. And then show them this refrigerator because I love it when people say, "I oh, got oh. cheap shit on this oh, boat." No, this this Holy refrigerator. Cow. No, okay. Now Betsy picked out this refrigerator. This is a top of the line Sub Zero drawer refrigerator. See, I got apples. Now the oranges, reason I picked this and because I it got is, spicy pickles. One, it's got these compartments, so stuff's not going to fall over everywhere. Yeah, that is but a good it idea. Is so heavily insulated. And and those it's refrigerators just they incredible. yeah and the refrigerators they put on the little boats you got to unpack everything to get to something down in the bottom this one you know it's got another drawer down below which is just oh full of god, water no water bottles yeah it's the water bottle drawer so. well I thought you were making water no not in the river oh uh, god that would foul so we have so we have up. salt water and and heavy yeah. water eventually this will be river well this will be salt water I'm not going to run river water through my right. system yeah that's that's hot that's cold. Cool, and you got to wash a dryer. Yes, and it works beautifully. And a deep freeze. Yeah, got a deep freeze over there. I got more food than that. Those and a over Keurig there. that I wanted an auction at a Basset Hound dog show. And it and it survived the freeze. And an induction. I had to unthaw the top. Keurig. Yeah, and I'm still looking for my pans. And oh, I put a the, convection oven. Yes, I cooked my pizza in there the other and day. And look at this. See. Gimbled. Mmm. Mm. I'm telling you. Yeah. Pretty, what's in here? I don't know. I don't think I put anything oh, in there. Oh, I yet. know what's going to go there. What? Well, like I have, you know, and you get these little, it's a little rack thing. Oh, cans. And you put it in there. No, your pans will stand oh, I got, up. Oh, I got one over here for that. Oh, got, you do? Yeah, see, I got, I, I even bought a pan the other day. I went to the store. You you, you'll be pan? so proud of me. Yes. Is that just the cutest little thing? Isn't that, and look, I, I, I bought, because I bought cornbread too. Huh? You didn't think I could cook. Did you buy eggs? I have eggs. I have eggs. I have eggs and I have cream cheese to and put bacon. in the corner. And bacon. And bagels and chicken florentine for Polly. And whatever this is, Non. Good. Look, and I have hummus. hummus. And I ate the, uh, and look, I got this stuff too. I don't know what it is. It looks like. Ricotta. It's... And so what did you cook last night? No. no you went to the Scarlet Crab. Yes. I never eat out by myself. And so I decided, and Betsy's given me shit about this for years. She says, you never go anywhere by yourself. So last <laughs> night, for the first time in my life, I went out to dinner alone. I'm so okay. proud of you. Yeah. I was so proud and of him. I let him use my rewards for free chocolate cake. Yeah, that's cool. Betsy has a lot of rewards at Scarlet Crab. So, yeah. So, anyway. So, it's slowly becoming my home. You know, I'm going to finally figure out where to put things and where they go. So I had the worst time finding some clothes the other day. down to go to the bathroom, right? No, I just pee off the back of the boat. But when it was cold, weren't you going down yeah, there? Yeah, I opened this up and I just moved back and forth from here to the bed. When I don't have to walk outside. I don't have to take the tape off the doors that way. And look at all these. What's this all about? Oh, those are our radios. Aren't those just yeah. geek, geek, We need geek, to remember geek, to use geek. them more often. That's for operating the, the, dab, the dab it on the back. And then I got another one for working the crane. So, but you still don't have a place for your, um, your rain gear, huh? No, I don't have let wet lockers. And you need more handholds. Yeah, something, we'll figure that out. Well, let's get on the ocean first and That's we'll figure out. Cool. Where, it'll be obvious where they need to go. So, no anyway. No fire down below. No what down below? No fire. No fire, not today. Nope. No, just a bleeding transmission down there. That's that's Monday's work though. Or Sunday, I'll start on that on Sunday. Mm, mm. I'm impressed. All right. All right, guys, I think that's it. Anybody got any decent questions there? We've been on for a while. We need to, we're heading off to, hi, water man, how you doing? You guys love the music on the end of our videos? That is Waterman. He's on this list here. And um, I don't know if he has any... Uh, 
uh, channel up now with his music or not, he ought to sell that stuff. If he does, I'll, I'll be the one to market it because that's all I use on the end of my videos now is his uh, steel guitar because he, it is, he, is, he is good. Anyway, thanks, Waterman. I appreciate it. And his first name, I can remember him easy. It's Doug. Um, let's see. Hi. You guys can't say fuck in the comment because it will hide itself automatically. See, I got um, to hit show on that. No, it, there won't be a problem with the clutches. Besides that, you know, so many people will predict things that aren't, you know, you, you don't want to be, you, it's just going to, you're just going to have a comment that's part of those two million things that did not happen badly. There's always a chance something's going to go wrong, but until somebody has the guts to go out there and possibly fail at it, you're not going to know for sure. You know, we're just guessing. Somebody said, oh, it's Jordan Peterson, that book I was listening to on the boat where the sheep was reading it to me. Yeah, yeah that one. The sheep said... You know, um, um, the sheep said, uh, humans are fantastic. We're separated from all the other animals on the planet because we are prediction machines. We can think about the future and, and think about what's going to happen. The problem is that we completely suck at it. <laughs> it's so true, you know. We can imagine all these things that are going to go wrong, and most of the time, the majority of those don't. So on that note, I will leave you off there. Go out there and do something. Try it out because, you know, what you think will go wrong probably won't. You might just have a wonderful time and learn something. And even if it does go wrong, you'll still learn something. Failure is part of life. You know, if you're not doing it, you're not living, you know. So with that, we're signing off. We're going out to see Fort Gibson. Thank you all for joining us. Appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful day.